And our final witness is uh, Annie Polger. She is executive director of the Mid Peninsula Community Media Center from Palo Alto, California. We welcome you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I actually run the nonprofit. Could you turn on your microphone? It's on. Okay. Could you move it a little bit closer then? <laughs> sure. I run a nonprofit peg access organization serving Palo Alto and five surrounding jurisdictions. I represent the Alliance for Community Media and over 3,000 peg access centers that operate 5,000 local community channels. On behalf of our members, community television producers and viewers, we thank Chairman Dingle and Markey and the members of the subcommittee for inviting the Alliance to speak with you today. Alliance members are here from California, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, New York, Ohio, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. Could you move that microphone just a little bit closer, please? Just pull it up. Pull it up. Okay, good. Thank you. PEG Access owes its existence to the visionaries in Congress who protected the franchise process to create a platform for local communication. In Palo Alto, for example, we carry Representative Eshoo's town meetings live on our channels, answering the emails of constituents who cannot attend. But in the past two years, there has been a major push to undermine local cable franchising. The FCC has overruled Congress, assigning itself powers that Congress meant for local communities. Industry-backed legislation in 17 states has further harmed public access. 30 years of community investment in PEG has been turned on its head. We welcome competition, but not at the expense of PEG access obligations. Representative Markey noted the dangers of this deregulatory fervor in an address a year ago in Memphis when he said, we will not let telecommunication companies or the FCC kill PEG access television. At this point, we'd like to start our video showing how long it takes to load a PEG channel on UVerse at a typical home in Cupertino, California. First, the customer flips through the commercial channels, then he loads a PEG channel. The challenge for PEG is not digital technology. Many PEG setters have already moved into te digital technology for production and transmission. The challenge is preserving PEG signal quality, function, channel placement, and funding. Let me give you an example. AT&T's PEG platform consigns PEG channels alone to a format that is inferior to commercial channels in virtually every way that matters to a viewer. For example, AT&T's PEG product cannot closed caption the educational programming that our hearing impaired students rely on. Most De Anza Community College programming is closed caption as California law requires. AT&T, however, will not pass through the closed captioning De Anza provides. This means that our disabled students cannot be served as the law and common decency demand. But the lack of closed captioning is just one of the several shortcomings of AT&T's PEG product. PEG channels in UVerse cannot be recorded on DVR, take from 45 to 90 seconds to load, are harder to find, have no second audio program for Spanish language or other translations, have only 25 as much resolution as other channels, have a smaller picture, stutter when used for sports, dance, or motion, and have no last channel or favorites capability on the remote. If AT&T's PEG product is so cutting edge, why aren't other basic commercial programmers on AT&T's system seeking the same treatment? Let's look at the broader picture. The threats currently faced by PEG in Palo Alto are being played out across the country but the problems go far beyond those presented by AT&T's PEG product. Phone and cable companies may tell you that they're taking care of PEG access, but the reality can fall short of that. PEG funding in Ohio, Missouri, Florida, and Wisconsin will end in less than five years. Comcast 
closed peg facilities in nine communities in northern Indiana and 12 in Michigan. Salina, Kansas is losing more than $130,000 this year as a result of operators' interpretation of new state laws. As more of our media is consolidated, outsourced, regionalized, and controlled by people far away from our hometowns, the local commitment of our PEG channels becomes all the more important. Whether it's an urban neighborhood or a small town, we need local media resources like PEG access. To ensure PEG's future, Congress must act to strengthen laws protecting PEG access. We look to our leaders in Congress to preserve the ability of local communities to express their unique interests, to know their neighbors, to stay informed. Let industry and the FCC know that efforts to imperil PEG will not be tolerated or allowed to stand. We ask you to reinvest in our local communities for which PEG access is the only and last remaining local television by making sure that community programming grows and thrives in the future. Thank you for your time. I look forward to your questions. Thank you, uh, Ms. Folger, very much. And uh, I ask unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter from the City of Boston on these issues as well, without objection. Uh, so ordered.